and everything today was designed to build muscle all right not to burn fat to build muscle hey guys i'm mark mckillie with live anabolic and today i put together a full body muscle building workout that you can do at home with nothing but dumbbells all right, so I want to talk to you about how exactly I came up with today's workout program, and that is I just copied my personal workout program that I do throughout the course of the week, but I condensed everything, a full week's worth of workouts for me, into one workout for you guys. So this is, this is how I do it. I have broken up my body into five different muscle groups, and it's chest, back, legs, shoulders, and arms, okay? And I do one of those body parts each day. So I just focus on one body part and I just kill it. You know, I might do 16, 18, 20 sets of a particular body part, then go home and rest and then go back to the gym the next day and hit something completely different. Well, we're gonna break up our workout today into those five different muscle groups, okay? But we're gonna do them all in one day. So how the hell are we gonna do that, <laughs> all right? Well, instead of doing 20 sets of chest, I'm gonna have you do three sets of chest. So each body part that we hit today, we're only gonna do three sets. But I want you guys to do about 12 to 15 reps. Normally I call out to do about 10, okay? But, but, but because we're really trying to hit and accomplish so much today, I can only have you do three sets of each muscle group, all right? And to really fatigue a muscle in only three sets is pretty tough, which means you gotta do more reps to keep the volume a little bit higher. So pick a weight that you can do for 12 to 15 reps, but I want you to be really exhausted, all right, at the end of each set. I want you to be able to barely get out that 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th rep, okay? Don't get to 15 and put it down and go, oh, that was easy, all right? So that's, that's the key is the intensity. All right, so I'm gonna give you the five different exercises in a minute, and then I'm gonna demonstrate each exercise and show you how I think you guys can do them at home with just nothing but dumbbells, real, real straightforward. But before I get to the workout, itself i just want to remind you of a free resource okay we have a phenomenal facebook group all right so you're watching this on youtube so you guys are obviously youtube literate okay create a facebook account click on the link below this video and ask to join the group because i'm the moderator i'm the guy in there every single day throughout the day answering questions but there's also over 15,000 guys in this group all over the world which makes it really fun and interesting. And so they're all just like you, same age as you are, same problems as you are, are having. And so they're asking questions and they're answering each other's questions and motivating each other. And anyway, promise you guys will not regret it. Even if you're not a Facebook fan, I don't care. You need to join just this one group. It will actually make your journey, your fitness journey so much more enjoyable. All right, so for me, the first day of the week is Monday, and I hit chest. But that's all I hit on Monday is just chest. Now remember today, we're gonna hit all five muscle groups. But one of my favorite exercises for chest at the gym is something you can do at home, and that is incline dumbbell chest presses. So guys, I got a bench here. If you don't have a bench at home, that's fine. You can do this on the floor. But I, I recommend you guys take a cushion off of your couch or off a chair and put it behind your back okay when you're doing it on the floor that'll let you get your elbows deeper behind your back and give you a bigger range of motion and you'll get a better better stretch in your chest and you'll just feel it you know a lot better all right but if you have a bench this is this is the way i really like to do it. i put it on a slight incline it doesn't have to be a real steep incline okay and that when we put it on an incline like that it helps to focus the movement a little bit more on our upper chest. Now we're still getting our lower pec muscles. Now remember there's upper and lower pec muscles. So this way, it just adds a little bit more emphasis to the, to the top of our chest, which is usually the smallest part of the muscle group for most guys, me included. So anyway, here we go. All right. I really like to get full range of motion. So if your shoulders will allow you Really, you can let these dumbbells come down and actually just barely touch your shoulders. And then, guys, when you go to the top, 
try not to lock it together like this because when I'm like this, see how the dumbbells are directly over my elbows and my shoulders? And what that means is my joints, my shoulder and elbow joints are actually helping with the weight, keeping the weight up in the air. So my, my pecs, my chest is not really engaged right now. But if I stop here, all right, with a slight bend in my elbows, the weight is actually trying to pull my arms apart. It's not going straight through my elbows and shoulders. So my chest muscles are still engaged right now, all right? So full range of motion, guys. And then remember, 12 to 15 reps, all right? And I up the number of reps because we're not doing many sets of chest today, all right? We're only gonna do three sets of this. And a lot of you guys may not have real heavy dumbbells, all right, so if you don't have heavy dumbbells, you're gonna have to knock out more reps to get a really good pump going. Ah, oh, ah, oh, and to get your chest fully fatigued after every set. All right, so down with the dumbbells, give yourself a rest, and depending on how much time you guys have to spend on today's workout, you can rest anywhere from 60 seconds to two minutes um, typically if you rest longer, that means the next set can be just about as intense as the previous set because you've had time not only to get oxygen back into all your muscles, but you've also had time for the blood to flush out the lactic acid that builds up in your muscles, okay? And so if you're in a rush, 45 seconds to a minute rest, if you got plenty of time, two minutes, the longer the rest, the more intensity you can put into each individual set, which means the more muscle growth, all right? So it's really kind of up to you. You guys can adjust these workouts real easily to fit your specific goals and your fitness level. All right, so let's move on to exercise number two. It's a completely different muscle group. So this would be my Tuesday workout, and that is back. All right, so because we're trying to hit all these different muscle groups in one day, I'm only gonna have you do a single back exercise. And I'm gonna have you guys do dumbbell rows. All right, so there's a couple ways you can do it. We can do it with two dumbbells or one, okay? If you have the time, okay, I recommend you do one, one arm at a time, and I'm gonna show you why. Because a, a bent over dumbbell row is just like this. You wanna support your upper body like I'm doing here, and that will take all the stress off your lower back, okay? So I'm gonna have, when I'm doing these rows, I'm really just feeling it in my lats, and my middle and upper back. And see how I'm bringing my elbow back towards my hip? All right, so don't bring your elbow straight up like this. I want you to bring the dumbbell backwards and your elbow back towards your hip and let it go all the way down at the bottom. So my arm is straight at the bottom, and at the top, my elbow basically is as high as I can get it, but I don't want you twisting, all right? So none of this. This is, this is one of the exercises I see performed with the worst form at the gym. This and lat pull downs are some of the worst, and of course, curls. And let me show you what I'm talking about. You see, get these young guys in there and they're really trying to impress everybody else that might be watching, okay? They'll get really heavy weight, 100, 110 pounds, and they'll, and they'll, and then they'll, they'll yank it up, all right? And so what they do is they use this explosive movement at the bottom, which gets the weight moving, but it, it creates momentum in the weight also. And so the momentum helps assist your muscles and getting it up, okay? But you got very little time under tension, all right? And then they let the weight fall back down. So guys, the way to, the way to build muscle is really to use good form, okay? And I've, I've said this many, many times, but if you don't have heavy enough dumbbells that are gonna fatigue you by the 12th or 15th rep, then I want you to one, two, three, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. So you just hold it at the top, okay, under full contraction, 
and that'll make the weight feel heavier than it actually is. Now, for you guys that don't have time to do one arm and then the other arm, because even though that's better, it does take twice as long to do three sets. Basically, you're doing six sets, right? So you guys can do two arm bent over rows, but the problem is with that is you can't support your upper body with your off hand, which means you're supporting the weight of your upper body plus the weight of the dumbbells all with your lower back. So you guys have to be really careful. And let, let me show you the main trick to doing it, okay, safely. And that is when you bend over, start by sticking your butt out, okay? You stick your butt out and you feel like you're arching your back. All right, so my butt, it feels like it's sticking way out and I feel like my back is arched. But in reality, if you look at yourself in a mirror from the side, my back is pretty straight right now, okay? And so now I'm just gonna row. And once again, it's, it's all about the form because I can cheat on this too. And you can do it real fast, okay? So stick your butt way out. My knees are bent, all right? My back feels like it's arch, but really it's straight, okay? And this, oh, and I'm just staring out in front of me about six feet out on the ground. And now I'm focusing on bringing my elbows. So don't worry so much about the dumbbells or your hands. Really get that mind muscle connection thinking about getting the elbow back. Because when you get your elbow back, the dumbbells just follow along. Okay guys, let's move on to my Wednesday workout, which would be the third exercise or the third body part for today, and that would be legs. Now, guys, you might notice that the first two exercises were upper body, the third exercise is our legs, and then the last two exercises, we're gonna go back to upper body. So that's how I break up my week. I try to push the upper body exercises as far apart as possible, just to give my muscle groups some time to rest. I try not to do muscle groups back to back to back that get utilized together, all right? And so that's why my legs come right in the middle of the week, and that's why legs are number three out of, out of five exercises today. So instead of just doing body weight squats, all right, a lot of you guys might be able to knock out, you know, 50 or 60 of these nonstop. All right, now while that is beneficial, if, if you're using a weight that you can do 50 or 60 times, you're not pushing yourself very hard and there's not a lot of intensity there, which means there's not as much potential muscle growth. All right, so today we're gonna do something called a goblet squat. So it's just a single dumbbell. A lot of you guys are gonna probably have to use the heaviest dumbbell you have, all right? And I'm just gonna hold it right here up against my chest and my stomach, okay? Now we're just gonna do the same form. Look where my elbows are at the bottom of the movement. They hit my thighs, right? That tells me that I've made a really good full range of motion. The other thing I'm doing is I'm just picked a spot on the wall in front of me and I'm just basically staring at that spot. And if you're really fatigued, how do you put this down? It's real heavy. Leg up, boom. Now, that's how you do it without dropping the dumbbell or having it slip out of your hands. Because some of you guys might be really, really pushing it hard. And on those last couple of reps, you're just barely able to hold that thing up. And this is an adjustable dumbbell, so it's kind of fragile, which means you don't want to drop it. It'll never work again. So just bring your thigh up, put it on your thigh, and then reposition your hands from the flange to the handle. You can put it down. So goblet squats, as you can tell <laughs> from my breathing hard, are really, a great exercise you can do at home with nothing but dumbbells. Okay, on to exercise number four. That would be my Thursday, and I do shoulders on Thursday. Um, 
So when I'm at the gym doing shoulders, you know, I'll probably do at least three different exercises, sometimes four or maybe even five, because I got, you know, the whole day just to focus on shoulders. But we got to knock out shoulders with only one exercise, because remember, we're doing five body parts today. That's a long, tough workout. So I had to pick my favorite shoulder exercise, and that is lateral dumbbell raises. So guys, this is also a really good exercise for those of you who have bad shoulders, because I'm not gonna ask you to raise your arms above your head, okay? You're gonna keep your hands relatively low. And so for guys with bad shoulders, this is probably the best exercise to try, okay? Now you're not gonna be able to do much weight, okay? because form is really, really important with shoulders. So you're gonna have a slight bend in your elbows, okay? And I'm gonna bend over just a slight amount, okay? Just a couple inches. And I'm gonna focus, once again, on bringing my elbows up, not the dumbbells. So if I raise my elbows, the, the dumbbells just come along naturally. Now, if you focus too much on the dumbbells, you'll start to do this. And see how the dumbbells are higher? Then my elbows, that puts a lot of stress on your shoulders. You just try it once or twice and you'll feel, okay? You'll feel it in your shoulders and it won't feel good. So just bring your elbows up to about shoulder height is all you need and then control the weight up and down. So this is an exercise you can cheat on and swing, okay? And get that momentum going, uh-uh. And guys, if your shoulders are bad enough that you can't bring the dumbbells real high, but you can bring them to here, it's still gonna work. This is one of the rare exercises, or, or I should say rare body parts, I think, where you can do partial range of motion and still get a, a really good pump going. So if your shoulders are so bad you can only bring them to here, I'm fine with that. What you need to do is just go real slow. Bring them to here and hold it one, two, three, slow down, one, two, three, slow, control down, one, two, three, all right, so when you really have a limited range of motion like that, you're going to have to trick your muscles into thinking that the weight is heavier than it really is, and just going really slow and using super good form and holding the weight at the peak contraction, whether it's a bicep curl, okay, or, or a, um, a lateral raise, doesn't matter. Hold it at peak contraction for a few seconds and then slowly lower it back to the starting point. You do that really well, I promise you're gonna feel the burn and that means you're building up a lot of lactic acid, which is exactly what we want. All right. It's the last body part. Body part number five is arms. And that would be my Friday, which means, unfortunately, we gotta do two different exercises for arms because our arms consist of biceps and triceps and they work counter to each other. So when you're working biceps, you're getting basically no tricep work at all and vice versa. So, so my Friday workout or your fifth exercise is really two exercises. So. The first one, all right, that I really like are dumbbell twisting curls. All right, so when I say, when I say twisting curls, you're gonna start at the bottom of the movement. And of course my palms, if I wasn't holding these dumbbells, would be facing my thighs. They're in basically a neutral position. So as I start the curl, as soon as the flange of the dumbbell passes my thigh here, I start twisting and come all the way up don't come all the way to here. See how my elbow came forward? All right. So I want you to, you start with a hammer position. This is like a hammer curl. And as soon as it passes your thigh, you start to twist and you come to peak contraction about right here. But see, my elbow is still by my side. It hasn't come forward. All right. So on the other side, and when you go from side to side, I would call this alternating. Okay. You might have to tilt your body slightly to help give clearance between the dumbbell and your thigh. So I will tilt and I will bring it forward in a hammered position. As soon as that flange passes my thigh, I immediately start to twist 
and curl. And then you just reverse the movement. So it's slow up, slow down, slow up, slow down. Guys, this is another exercise. Check your ego at the door, all right? Because you can lift a whole lot of weight if you start swinging these dumbbells up and yanking them up, all right? But you're not really accomplishing much. You do it slow and controlled like this, you're gonna feel an unbelievable pump and burn in your biceps, okay? So I'm doing alternating now, which means, of course, it takes twice as long. Because when I say do 12 to 15 reps, I mean on each arm, okay? So you would have to do a minimum of 24 of these if you were doing alternating. For those of you guys that are pressed for time, I'm totally fine with you doing two-arm bicep curls. I still want you to twist the dumbbells as you bring them up and lower them. Because when you do that... You engage a higher percentage of muscle fibers in your bicep versus just doing them in a hammer position or just doing them in a strict neutral hand position. So the twisting actually encourages more muscle fibers to get involved. Okay, so this is part two of, of our arm exercise and now it's time to hit our triceps. So lots of different tricep exercises. There's some phenomenal band exercises that I love doing at home, they're tricep pushdowns. They're very similar to what you can do at the gym with cable machines, but today's workout is dumbbell only. So here we go, let's do some skull crushers. All right, so basically, I'm getting in the same position that I would if I was doing a chest press with these dumbbells. Now, once again, you can't use very much weight because the form is really important. You, you see a pattern here with me talking about form, all right? And it's not just about avoiding injuries. Form really does build muscle, okay, versus just living, lifting heavy weight with bad form, okay? So here we go. Skull crusher. I like to support my elbow with my off hand. And if you can tell, the dumbbell basically is right by my ear, all right? So I'm just going to press straight up and then down. And once again, just kind of look at the speed and how I'm controlling the weight throughout the full range of motion. Now, if you come to the top and you come too far forward like this, the weight is directly over my elbow, which is directly over my shoulder, and now my joints are supporting the weight. My tricep is not really even engaged right now, all right? So I stop here with my elbow back towards my head, and it never goes down towards my torso, okay? So at the top of the movement, when my arm's straight, I'm still tilted backwards over my head, which means my tricep is engaged right now. Even though my elbow's locked out, the weight is trying to pull my arm back and my tricep has to resist that. So down and up. And then of course, we're only doing one arm at a time here. All right, gotta switch over to the other side. One, two. All right, so I'm not gonna do all 15 for you, but guys, this is a tough exercise to do, which means you really can't use much weight because the first four or five reps are gonna feel pretty easy and you're gonna think you didn't pick enough weight, but then you get to rep number 12 to 15 and it's really gonna start burning, okay? Especially if you're doing good form. And remember, because we're only doing one arm at a time, it takes twice as long. And for those of you guys that are pressed for time, I'm fine with you doing two arm skull crushers. But it's harder to keep your elbows where they're supposed to be because you don't have your offside arm able to stabilize your elbow and keep it in place. So you gotta really, <laughs> Really focus on trying to keep your elbows as still as possible when you're going through that full range of motion. Oh boy, let's come up here and finish it out. So guys, total body workout and everything today was designed to build muscle, all right? Not to burn fat, to build muscle. 
And basically we did the exercises in the exact same order that I do the exercises every week, except I space them out over the course of five days. You're spacing them out over the course of about 45 minutes. <laughs> and so guys, at the end of your workout, because we've hit every muscle in your body, you're gonna feel a phenomenal pump. It's gonna be a really good feeling, trust me, guys. And then the other thing is, you're not gonna get fit overnight, all right? You can't just watch a few of these YouTube videos that Gary and I put out there and think it's radically gonna change your, your, your life. But it will if you stick with it and never give up on it.